So I wanted to make a video about orping on CT side of Mirage um, and just give a few tips and tricks to players about how to play it. So the main thing about CT orping on Mirage is it's very much based off spawns. So we'll go through what kind of spawns you can get and where you should peek for them. Um, so first of all we'll start off with like the mid spawns that you can get. So mid is much more forgiving in terms of spawns. So you can spawn around this area that I'm just running around now and still peak mid. If you're spawning in the very back areas we'll go through what you can do there, but if you're spawning in this area here then you'll be fine to just go and peak mid because you'll get there before the tees. Um, so we'll go through what normal what players normally do. So I'll jump through the vent and I'll just take this angle here. Take this simple angle here that everyone takes. And the reason why this is bad is because it's so predictable. Um, T orpers will just come along and just aim into this area, um, double scope into it and just pre-fire it a lot of the time as well. Uh, so the reason why that's bad is because it's so predictable. Um, that's why they, the T orpers will just pre-aim that area. Uh, and we'll go more, we'll go into more about predictability as an author uh, in general and why this map's so good for it. Uh, being unpredictable, not being predictable, obviously, <laughs> being unpredictable. So one of the ways you can switch it up is by jumping up onto this box, not this box, just jumping up onto here. So I saw Kenny S do this very early on, uh, and a lot more pros are doing it now. So what you do is just jump up onto here and you peek this angle here instead. Uh, I like to pick this one because it's uh, covered a, mo lot, uh, a lot more, um, but some people like to just stand up and peek here, um, try the shot and then fall back. Um, so that's one way of just switching up. The reason why it's good is because you're in not like an off angle, but you're just offset in terms of your elevation. So when T's come around here, they'll be aiming at your legs, not your torso. Um, so that won't be a one hit kill, obviously, and then you can kill them with a one hit. So yeah, even if they fire first and just pull the trigger and not flick then from reactions, then you'll be able to kill them first. Uh, another thing you can do is if you get a really good spawn, there's there's two things you can do actually. If you spawn, yeah, on this area here, which is like the best spawn you can get, as you can see on the map, uh, you go through the window, and I've seen JW do this a couple of times. He just jumps across and just gets as far across as possible, and then he starts peeking out from this side. Um, the reason why this is good because when the enemy team, the T sides players come up, they'll be expecting players to be on this left side and to come out from this area across to the right of their screens and for you to peek out there. They wouldn't expect someone to be on this side and peeking out. So you can get sort of an advantage like that, they won't expect it and he does, after a while he'll he'll hold it and then he'll slowly come back and just start peeking these angles again and just clearing it out in case someone's holding for this area here. So another thing you can do with that good spawn is that you can jump across and over to short. I've seen Kenny S do this a couple of times, so he'll come across and then he'll jump up onto here. And there's quite a few places you can peek from. You can just stay here and peek because it's just a weird angle that they won't expect. They'll be aiming there and they won't expect someone to be high up here. Again, you can go aggressive and peek like that if you really want. Maybe if there's a smoke down, you might be able to see over it. Like so, so you'll be able to see over the smoke um, and pick them off as they're trying to get across to the box. Or you can just simply just get up here um, and just come down like like Kenny normally does and just peek this angle. That's what I've seen him do. He doesn't stay up on the top, or just any other pros that does this that do this. Sorry, uh, they'll just peek this angle here um, and just get to short quickly. And the T's won't expect you to uh, be able to get here that quick because the other way that you do it, the normal way that everyone would do it, is to go around through kitchen, be up short and then peeking it which would take much longer than just jumping across. If you do get stuck here and you miss the jump it's probably best to just come up here and hold this angle here uh, which will go through as a connector player who will hold this angle. So this isn't a bad angle as all, at all because you can just shoot and fall back instantly and be in cover uh, but don't hang around too long because underpass players may come and get you. So if you get a fairly crappy spawn at the back of, uh, of the CT spawn area here um, which no one likes then you can still go mid, but I've seen Olaf throw this flash. It's just it's not not anything special. It's just he does this a lot. He throws it first and bounces there. He throws it like that, and then he'll peek with it. Um, 
the reason why this is so effective is because you can peek whenever you want and you won't get flashed at all so you can peek before, during or after the flash um, so you can catch T's whenever they're turning around so you throw it and then you can peek before it as they're about to, as they're t about to turn around and you can pick them off and you can wide peek during that time as well get a vision and catch anyone off who's in the middle get a pick and then fall back so once you're peeking mid window from mid window into mid then if you don't see anyone top mid then what you can do is jump down into into mid here and watch underground and pick off any players that are slow walking up not expecting you to jump down because it's quite a weird thing to do you're probably watching these angles expecting someone to come out that way so just jump down um, and they'll never they much harder to react to it as well when they're this far away because you'll just pop down into the screen and instantly just shoot them uh, what you do have to be careful though is when you go for this is there might be a reaction from top mid so you've got to get out of mid really quickly you can't hang around um, you need to get to safety so another thing I've seen being done is from Digging Test where they've had two players who've got the good spawn, an AWPer and just you know a rifler and they get both of them to jump through the vent area and they both quickly get across to here and they boost the AWPer up into the ladder room and then go down short so this is an alternative to jumping across mid so if you want to peek mid but you get a spawn that's towards this side, towards A then you can still peek it but you can try from connector so if you come up towards A and just run along, speed up, um, then I guess a lot of people know about this, this is just an angle here, but then you can also switch up by playing here. Um, this is very strong if they like to smoke mid, top mid here to cross to the boxes, because you can actually just see them, their, like their legs coming across, so you can just aim high, see the legs, pull the trigger and get an easy kill, because they won't be able to see you from this angle whilst they're running along. So something very unique that I've seen is from Henny, from Immortals, who will smoke mid here. Uh, I'm pretty sure the smoke would come a bit closer than that, like so. And he would go and peek uh, underpass, um, get the kill and just instantly fall back. Uh, this is a really risky play because whilst you're doing this, uh, T's could just push up short and shoot you whilst you're aiming down here. Um, and so it's probably something you want to do once, very rarely. Um, it's just something to do, just to add to your collection of different peaks you can do for your team on CT to get a 4v5 situation for you. As we were talking about A spawns, uh, we'll actually look at what you can do with these A spawns on A. So if you come at ramp, then a lot of people will know about this peak, but you can actually peek into uh, ramp here and see heads moving across and shoot them. Uh, but what I like to do, and I've seen lots of pros do, is they actually come up onto the bench and peek from here. As you can see, up to their shoulders. Uh, so it's a much easier peek to go for rather than just trying to shoot heads moving across really fast. Uh, but you've got to be careful because T's will also peek this angle. I feel like it's a more advan advantageous peek for a T player. I find it easier peek. I don't know if that's the same for other people. So just be careful when you're doing it. Um, but if you feel confident enough, then you can go for it. Another really, really interesting peak is up into Palace. Uh, I've seen JW and Kenny S do this a lot. So they'll come across, jump up onto here, and peek into Palace like so. And if you do this, if you've got the good spawn and you do this, you can actually get here before T's cross to this area. So you can hold this, you don't have to worry about anyone there, you can just hold this area. Um, but what I saw recently was Kenny S actually got up here and he stood here for like a few seconds, smoked off and then peeked uh, which I feel is flawed because you want to peek into this not having to flick over to this area, you want to be able to get here as soon as possible and just hold it down, you don't want to make it more difficult than it has to be so what you probably could have done was um, run up and jump up onto here himself and have a player smoke for him, like on A I believe it's Apex who plays, so he can smoke this for him. I understand what he's going for with the smoke. Um, he's putting the smoke down to trick the T's that are in Palace to think that no one's pushing up because they've smoked off. No one's just going to rush through a smoke like that. Um, at least without pop flash or something. So they won't be thinking that all of a sudden there's going to be a player holding this angle ready to take a fight and then he can instantly just fall back into the smoke and get away without getting shot. Uh, but when you go for that you need a player helping you 
uh, cover a ramp to make sure no one gets up Tetris. So, you know, when I do this, I always stress to my teammates, do not let them get up Tetris or I will die. Or I'm going to get shot in the back of the head. So with B, we'll look at the spawns for it. So with the spawn, you want to get this really, really good spawn that you can get from mid as well. But this time, you can go B with it. So you'll run across B, you'll do the whole stuff there. And you can peek up here. To get up into the van quicker, um, you'll want to come from this way because you can just jump twice like that and get up. Uh, if you come this way, then you have to jump three times. So you have to jump up, jump again, and jump again up into the van. So the, there's two types of peaks you can go for. There's the safe peak that I like to call it, which is the one where you go up to the box. And this involves coming around this way and just getting onto the box and just holding here. If you get to here, you'll guarantee to get here before any T's. No T's will be past this point on your crosshair um, when you get here. So you can just hold this angle fine. Uh, the more risky peak is this one where you actually get up onto the van. So you're coming along, doing the jump and then peaking here. So if you get a really, really good spawn, the best spawn you can get to, then if you do this, you should get here before any T's unless they get some sort of insane spawn as well. Then you may cross at the same time here. Um, so you just got to be aware for that. In terms of what you can do with this, so if you get onto the van and you don't see anyone and your teammate doesn't call that anyone, you can't hear any footsteps up in B apps, uh, you can do what C's does and pushes up aggressive. So you can either just hold this angle back here, peek into it, and what you can do is then push up as well, but you don't want to push up too far because you need to get an escape, because with an AWP obviously you can only fire one shot. Um, and getting rushed down by two two or multiple people is a nightmare, especially when you're in an open spot like this. So you want to hold here, get a peek, and instantly just run and get out of the window. Because if you're up here and you're pushed up too far, you might get a peek, or you might get a kill, but then there's people rushing you down and you don't want to spend time running away with your back to them, trying to get out and getting away when they're rushing up with tech nines or AKs and they can quickly shoot you in the back. So just be aware of how far you've pushed up. Uh, if you want to push up any further, probably best to get a a, T, a CT player, maybe the short guy comes up and pushes with you. So you can be the point man, pushing up, clearing the angles, and then the CT's there to trade frag um, and just cover you. If you fire and someone tr on their team tries to get the trade frag, then they're there to help as well. So something else you can do on B apps is you can jump up into this window here. Um, I find this spot fairly similar to on Dust 2 on short on the bricks because what you can do is you can shoot, pretend you've fallen off and then re-peak again and then actually fall off. Um, so that's just another neat spot to use since when T's are coming out they're not going to be checking for someone in the window, they're going to be pushing up trying to check these corners and stuff like that um, and they won't expect someone to be standing in a window like that. So the problem with that I see from a lot of AWPers who play mid is that they'll they'll get to this angle, this is fine, they'll get the kill and then they'll make a mistake by either re-peaking and then there's another player there ready to trade frag or they'll get the they'll, they'll get smoked off or something and they'll stick around for too long, that's the main problem they stick around here and they play this position, they try and play it for the whole round the reason why it's so difficult is because you're basically a, just a shooting gallery for the T's they have so many places they can peek out of especially when they smoke off top mid, they can get to so many spots they can get to this area here and peak, this side of the boxes, this side of the boxes and then they've also got people who can come underground that can shoot you when they see the, your barrel and they jump up and they can shoot you in the side of the head um, it's just really difficult to watch all the angles and just keep looking around all the time just flicking back and forward so what you see from a lot of teams especially from Na'Vi is that Guardian will come and do this peak um, if there's a smoke there then he'll fire through it a couple of times or just if he gets the first kill he'll instantly just fall back to CT um, most of the time he goes A, sometimes he might go B if there's a, if they've called a certain strat but most of the time he'll go A and he'll just play from CT spawn, playing from the ticket booth area so he'll just be watching ramp, helping Flamey um, he's a solo A player so he can watch ramp from this area here and he can jump up onto the ticket booth and watch into connector and mid sort of area uh, and then that would leave Edward in ladder room and it, I think it was Zeus who was playing this um, I'm not sure if it was Zeus but then 
that would be taken over by Simple, who would play the connect area. Um, obviously, they'll see how they change up their uh, strats with Simple in the team, but that's what the the core idea of their mid presence was. Now, uh, Guardian would peek, and then they would have uh, Edward and in the ladder room, and I think it was Zeus in connector. So another mistake that I see mid players make is that they'll peak mid, they'll do their thing at mid, and then when they fall back, if they've been in mid for too long but they survived, they'll fall back and they, they'll just come and just automatically come jungle and peak palace, uh, which is a huge mistake to peak palace from here, because a T can, like JW would do a lot of the time, he'd come up and he would just instantly just aim into this spot and just wait. Just wait and wait and wait until an, a player would come through window, not expecting an author to be here already the whole round, and just pick them off. And it's so difficult to peek into the angle here, because um, it's such a thin gap they have to peek into, and it's very difficult to pre-aim it. So you can, you know, even just practicing now, it's still really difficult. Like so, even now the the T author would get you most of the time. Uh, and just a quick advice, in terms of peeking up into Palace, this is a much favourable peek for a CT than the T here, because it's an off angle compared to peeking up on stairs or peeking from the Palace area. This is just a, a different spot that a lot of T's don't check. So I'll just go over some of the positions that you can play sort of mid to late round with an AWP. Uh, so there's lots of peaks that you can go for, but we should also look at how you should play once you've got those peaks. Um, so some of the good positions are uh, Ticket Booth here, uh, which you see Guardian play a lot. You just come back here, watch the ramp, watch up into Palace as well. You can even jump onto it, which you would have seen me do before, and you can just watch into a connector and even up short. Uh, so this is a really strong position. Um, you can also come onto B and just use a lot of the angles to peek up into uh, apartments. So you can use just here, you can use here. A good one you can use is, put, I'm sure a lot of you know this, jumping up onto here. You just walk into this corner of the box and then you just jump up and then you can watch this. Um, so you look here, that's where your eyes are trained, you look there and you pre-aim the corner and then when they come through, come running through, then you can shoot them. Um, you can hold defensively watching that angle as well. A lot of people will peek here in the open just really easy for the T's to just peek out and kill you, but if you're more secluded and hidden a bit more, like this angle here, uh, hiding behind the box, even like that probably, yeah, that would be good, and then aiming like this, uh, you're much difficult target to see than just standing in the open, just crouched. So just another peek that you can do, I'm sure quite a lot of you know, but just in case you didn't, you can jump up onto this box here, um, and it's a much easier way to peek into Palace without being exposed as much. So you just come in, double zoom here, and you're already watching it, compared to being on the stairs and having so much of your body exposed whilst peeking. Um, so yeah, if you you can get up onto it as well if you come into this corner uh, and stand up, and you won't be seen by the T's yet, and then you can peek into it like so. Um, just don't come into this corner and jump it, because as you're jumping up, they'll see you, and then you get shot. So I wouldn't really recommend playing on a site because of how the positions that you can play you can't really fall back from very easily so f from here for example a lot of people actually play this position but the problem with this position is not only do you have to peek close which means that you the, the T's will see you before you see them unlike a peek from further away you'll be able to see them around the same time depending on how close they are obviously um, I'll go through that again so I wouldn't recommend playing on A uh, as an author on the on the site itself, um, just because of how you can't really fall back from any of the positions that you can play. A lot of people play from here, which is a really bad spot because when you so you can have this peak, but once you want to re-peak, uh, your shoulder is going to be showing before you are even peaking. Um, so the T's can easily just shoot you before you you've even peaked out. Um, and to win around from here you're gonna have to hit some crazy highlight reel shots which will look good but if you want to play the percentages then it's better to play from a spot like um, the ticket booth or from the jungle area where you can actually fall back into a safe spot if they are rushing 
Um, but from here and and here, these sort of positions are just risky because even though you're peeking here and you're pulling back to cover, someone come out, can come out palace, um, and then you just rush you down really quickly. Unlike on B, where you've actually got a lot of movement and a lot of cover, so you can, you can peek here, you can come back here, and then you can peek here, then you can come back here and peek here. And you've just got lots of angles to work with, with these pillars. Uh, on A, you don't really have that luxury of having pillars like this that you can hide behind and take lots of different peaks from. Um, so yeah, you just need to be careful of that, where you position yourself after you've gone for an early peak and playing for the mid-round and late game. So at the beginning of the video I mentioned how uh, this map's really good for being unpredictable in terms of um, where you peak because of how this map, map on CT side is based off uh, your spawn in terms of what pick you go for. So the reason why this is so good is because it's very difficult for the T's to counter you in terms of what you're doing. You'll, that's why players like Guardian Fallen, Kenny S, JW, Device, these top authors uh, are so good is because the other team find it very very difficult to counter them since they are so unpredictable that's like the whole premise they don't know where they're going to be when they're going to be um, so how can you counter something when you don't know where it's going to happen or when it's going to happen when there's so many options um, and so by showing you all these peaks it can make your play unpredictable as well since you have so many peaks to choose from depending on your spawn they don't know what spawn you're going to get so you can just go wherever you wherever you get your spawn based off from um, and if you get two spawns in a row uh, there's several different peaks you can do from those so again if you get the A one you can go connector or you can go A or you can go bench if you get the B slash mid spawn then again mid and B and you can do whatever you want with those uh, peaks as well um, so yeah the T's can't counter what you're doing if you went mid every single round they would just smoke you off uh, and you wouldn't be able to make it a 5v4 situation which is kind of the main premise of being a CT opera you're either being that turret on a site or you're trying to be aggressive and get a 4v5 which is my sort of philosophy with how you should play the AWP um, I like a author who can get a pick or well, I like to play it get a pick so that you can get a 4v5 and instantly give your team an advantage um, early round so by being unpredictable say with mid, they would just smoke you off and you wouldn't be able to do anything um, early round and you'd have to fall back into your position uh, and play a 5v5 which favours the T the T side since they can stack up and just attack a site to together.